the run of Briscoe. Taken by Cook, and there's problems here for Grimsby. Taylor scores, and Grimsby went to sleep. And Gareth Taylor scores again. And Burnley have never. Well, I wonder if 2001, 2002 is going to be the season as far as Burnley is concerned. It's been a fantastic season up to now. Goals flying in right, left, and centre, up near the top of the table. Uh, crowds up as well. It's been a fantastic season. Can Burnley go all the way? They deserve to be up at the top. And I say, if the cap fits, wear it. There's a bit of controversy about it. Um, I can't think what happened now. Did he take the penalty and then they made him take it again? Somebody encroached or something. But 
we won and it was a good, great start to the season. But we won well that particular day. That was the first game of the season, televised match, and uh, we, we were comfortable. <laughs> Side. The ball played into David Conley, plays it in for number seven, Neil Hardley, into the box. It goes, and an opportunity here, and a goal for Wimbledon. And that is really against the run of play, it must be said once again. Steve Davis for the Clarets. Should have been a penalty earlier on, but uh, that one doesn't count. Oh, and a chance on here, a goal! even a softer goal being scored there because Burnley have gone straight down and scored goal field, I get the back pass, not a, not a hash of it. Yeah, it's not raining as Terry just pointed out and that's that's to come of course throughout the season as Briscoe manages to get Alan Moore on the left hand side. Moore returns it for Briscoe, Briscoe to the byline, a great ball from Briscoe, penalty at last. He's been brave enough, Ian Moore got the penalty there. Well, out, out of all the three times that he should have given a penalty, the one that possibly was a bit dodgy was that one, he's given a penalty. So, and uh, the Wimbledon, Wimbledon players are most incensed about it. This, well, the third penalty in a week for him as he steps up, 2-1. Paul Cook makes it 2-1, right on the half-hour mark. Pushed that away like uh, like Gary McCullough said did in the cup for an Emmy. There's one of free kick here. Uh, possibly. Paul Cook hammers it in. Oh! Up oh, Davis is up the goal, surely. Armstrong. And once again, Davis. Oh dear. Well, it's the crazy gang. Well, Terry's just said it's the crazy gang here. Quite right because the goalkeeper. We had a right hash of it again. Bubbled up. Big guy still. I got a little nod to one side. Armstrong scored. Dear me. Third corner to them in the second half. It's Kimball to take it for the Dons. Hammers it in. Ooh, and it was uh, a glancing header away. The Burnley defence. Oops. <laughs> That's the slippy surface that Ray was talking about. Ooh. And that's pull one back. And Shipley pulls a one back for Wimbledon. The Burnley three, Wimbledon two. And they've got to say, it looked like coming. Yeah, well, Wimbledon were a very... We've got a big, strong squad of players. And that was our first home game of the season. That was an exciting game. And we were... Uh, yeah, we did go behind. But, again, we won. We won the match, so... That represented a real good start for him. Good evening, welcome to Turf Moor. It's the Worthington Cup first round. It's just one match, and then, of course, uh, you know what happens there. We uh, hopefully go through to round two. Worthington Cup round one at the moment. Clarets versus Rushton and Diamonds here this evening. New members to the league, of course, this year. Haven't been around all that long. Corner comes in, the centre half and a goal for Rushton. And it's Mark Peters from the dead ball situation. There's Mullen that takes it once again, right hand side. Davis off the line, would you believe that? And uh, he's determined this thing. <laughs> Papadopoulos headed high over the bar. Underwood. Mustafa. And Mustafa still going a shot from him. Oh, what a goal from the right back. Tark and Mustafa and Burnley are in trouble now. Burnley nil, Rushton and Diamonds two. Yeah, he just showed his pace a minute ago against Ian Moore and he gets the ball clear. Surrounded by Burnley players, you thought there's nowhere to go, but he managed to dink his way around it. And from all of about 20, 25 yards, far corner, absolutely superb shot.
Davis again for the Clarets. Cross comes in from him. Hard one, a goal! Alan Moore gets the goal back for the Clarets. Great cross, great header. Some wizardly stuff from Glenn. And suddenly, again, we have danger with Jackson on that far side who's uh, on a counter-attack for Rushton and Diamonds. Steve Davis watching him. Jackson twists and turns. And a goal, number three. And that should be the end of it for the Clarets. Little controls it well, puts it down to McGregor on that far side. Oh, it's a poor cross. But it could be a goal. It is. Little on that far side, waits for the ball to come to him. He has at his feet now. Little McGregor on the right-hand side, overlapping. Oh, he runs away rather viciously for McGregor. The cross comes in from him, and a shot from Ball! Oh, my word! Repeat of last season, David, isn't it, with poor Kevin Ball? No wonder he puts his hands on his head. That rifled inches wide. Yes, it was. It was uh, we didn't play well at all that night and Rushton uh, rose to the occasion, they played very well and deserved to beat us on the night. So that was a big disappointment because we wanted to get a run in the uh, cup competition. We played well there, but that's an intimidating place to go as well. And uh, the league form had been really good in the early part of the season. So we, uh, again, we deserved to win that game. We were under a lot of pressure uh, at the beginning of the match and at the beginning of the second half, but we were in a comfortable winners. And that was a really, really hot day that day. I remember it well. And, you know, it was in the 90s. It was ridiculously hot, but the players done particularly well again. Welcome back to Turf Moor. Well, if you want thrills and spills, this should be your bank holiday banker. The Burnley fans well up for it. It's Burnley versus Manchester City. Let's rejoin our commentary team, Jim Beglin and Guy Havard. Yes, a full house, just under 22,000, they reckon, and about 18,000 food. Kevin Keegan lightheartedly as he made his way. And long trek it is from behind the goal to his position on the halfway line. Our referee, Clive Wilkes, has happy memories of this ground. His first ever match as a Football League referee was here in 1990. Burnley were then in the fourth division. They went on to become champions that year. This is Cook. I must admit, I couldn't tell if it was played with a hand. The keeper could 
still save it. I think he should have given him a yellow card and left it at that, and given City their penalty. And it is a definite penalty, but who's to say that the Copernicus wouldn't have got something on it? Kevin Horlock, interestingly, has stepped in ahead of Stuart Pearce. Let's hope he scores. Tiato in space, one chop, Gota, deflection, City ahead, yet again. One chop. Oh, brilliantly away from two. This is Gota, this could end it, it has. It's another turf ball hat-trick for Sean Gota. We had Gordon send off after about a half an hour, and uh, again they, they played really, really well. But uh, I, I remember Glenn in the start of the the half uh, hitting the crossbar, and we 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 created a lot of chances, and we were playing well, but it was just too much for us at the end. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, the Member Stadium for today's nationwide Division One game. Bradford City versus Burnley, Lancashire Yorkshire, or some will argue that there's a bit of a split camp in one or two areas around Yorkshire because it's only right on the border, Burnley, 30 miles away, and there's quite a few travel from Bingley and Keithley to Burnley, and, vice, and uh, from Bingley to Keithley and actually here, so there might be one or two divided loyalties, might be one or two uh, Yorkshire people supporting the Lancastrians. Good of a turn by Glenn Little. Ball played in. Creator. Mr. Tiffin and uh, Mr. Pearson didn't have their uh, focus in then, but the role play continues. Wally wins a good ball. A call to Jess. Jess challenged out of it by ball. Chance for more now. Alan Moore, edge of the box. certainly want to do well, played for uh, one of Bradford's Yorkshire rivals, Sheffield Wednesday's Carboni opens the game up with a ball on this near side to Wayne Jacobs. Ball played in! Hey! Over the side! Just under seven minutes this half left. Wally pulls it away. McCall to Carboni. Chips it in. Molinar! Oh, great save! Molinar thought he scored. What a great save by McCoppel 
Bush there. Played by Howard. Play on, says Mr. Pearson. Good advantage played by the referee. Little slides in there. It's there. personified at the back, tries to find Carboni, which he does, doing a pitch perfect pass, Carboni, to Jess, about it, just hammered it in, give Gary Walsh no chance at all, Carboni, plays the ball out wide to Robbie Blake, Robbie Blake now taking on West, good save, yes, yes, <laughs> we're glad to be here at the Bracken of English Stadium to witness this, Lancashire, uh, Yorkshire, Lancashire derby, and what a cracker it's been, as Coop now, Rolls it for Briscoe. Ellis inside the area, but Myers with a chance for Ellis. It's there! Ellis! The cheeky one! Yeah, that was another, uh, another exciting match and uh, a fantastic game. We, uh, Glenn's, Glenn got a couple. In fact, he got three, because he put one in and it went in and behind the line to come out at the boy at the post, behind the line and out, before there was any score. And then uh, Tony went on, and uh, when it was two each, and he, uh, he turned Andy Myers and uh, put a one in and we won 3-2, it was a real good match. He played football and he had a, a sweet left and a right foot volley of a shot. And it's uh, the visitors who try one hit the uh, bar. It was Stuart Talbot who tried his luck. He got stars in his eyes, and he was very unlucky. Taken from Kevin Watson there. Oh, put that ball in, captain of uh, Rotherham. Armstrong heads up straight in the air. Oh, strange kick there from Talbot. Tried to bend it to Talbot, but Paul Cook's in for Burnley. Now here's Little. Little, nice ball in for Weller. Running away from Weller all the time, that one. But uh, Kevin Ball's there with Little now. Little in the inside right channel. Ball through for Ian Moore. Can he get through? Moore scores a goal! Ian Moore scores against his father's club. 1-0 to the Clarets. Great goal and great ball. Well, that's just what we needed, wasn't it? Well, literally 30 seconds after half-time. A great ball, fed it there through the nine reader by Glenn there. A bit of hard to mark in midfield, but Ian Moore, well, I tell you what, his mum and dad, he's getting no teacher tonight when he, if he goes home, will he? Cross comes in and Davis sweeps the ball away on the six-yard line. Alan Moore. <laughs> Twisting and turning Alan Moore, how? Glenn Little again. 
Nice ball floated in. Oh, it's run nicely. It's 2 0. And it's Alan Moore. Let's have more. Well, what a lovely thing ball by Glenn again. Again, there. 30 yard ball. Well, I went on. His goalkeeper hesitated. Ball, well, I put it back then out there. 2 0 to Burnley after about two minutes of the second half. Well, a bit of hesitancy there. And Ronnie Moore will not be happy today. Oh, Sean gets the slightest of headers. Nowhere plays it long, too long, really. But Peyton, can he? I thought he was might be able to pick this one up. Cleared high once again. No hair. Whoops. And Armstrong thumps that one. Onside for Taylor. Now, can this be it? Gareth Taylor. He's taken the ball. A penalty, is it? A penalty. But I thought he'd uh, lost it. And it should be a sending off of Taylor. I and mean, Peyton. Will Peyton take this one? Well, I, I, yeah, actually, Andy Payton's grabbed that ball. He's going to take it, David. No question. Andy Payton's going to take it. But really, the goalkeeper should go off for that. Well. Well, that's a bit of harm. You've had your gun on the middle part. There we go. Too. Well, actually, I, I thought he'd, he'd actually lost a bit of control of it there. And, uh, but he got past the goalkeeper. Well, is he going to send them off as well as Bookham? Should have been a red card. Yep, yep. No consistency. Andy Payton then, can he. Uh... Yes! 3 0. Andy Payton back on the score sheet. Well, this fella can put him away, as you all know. No question. That's another goal on his, under his belt there. No problem whatsoever for him, was it? Yeah, and well, I'd added a bit of spice to it, and uh, as Ronnie said, he said I could have wrote the script, he and scored the first goal, you know, which, which was good for us, and we beat them. Beat them three, I think, was it three? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Game Burnley manager Stanton end for one would have been happy not to play. Such were his emotions following the midweek horrors in America. But all of football does go ahead. A two-hour distraction, perhaps, at this very sad time. As we pay our respects to the families of all victims tragically killed in the horrific terrorist attack which took place in America this week. Little trying to retrieve it quickly. Here's West. Little again. Headed ball towards Moore. Headed down into the path of Thomas. And the header goes in by Gareth Taylor. And Burnley wanted a goal. And Burnley have a goal. Approaching half an hour. And after Wall 
Saul's best spell of pressure. James Walker's been beaten, and Gareth Taylor celebrates. Mitchell Thomas, good ball. Finish well. It's not the first ball Mitchell Thomas has teased Warsaw with. This time, Burnley have benefited. Came towards New Era. Oh, and Walker's missed it completely. And I have to say, what an accomplished goalkeeper he is. He's had an aberration, and Ian Moore scores. Well, how frustrating is that? Not for Burnley, but for him. Well, the players were all turning away. The goalkeeper called. Never got anywhere near it. He called for it. No Eric got there first. Ian Moore couldn't miss. Walker with an impressive drop of the shoulder to give himself more time, but his clearance was headed clear by Davis. Forward and accurately too, and his rack. And he has smashed it into the corner of Nicopolis's net. And Walsall are the important scorers of the next goal. It was a beautiful ball in, played by Letao, and the finish, which I think took a bit of a deflection off Mitchell Thomas, nestled in the corner of the goal. Headed away by West, headed on by Letao. Here's Garocho. The deflection, oh! Davis and they've not only got back in it they've restored parity and you can't say that it hasn't been coming Steve Davis putting through his own net amidst the confusion caused by Garaccio's cross and Burnley who seemed in control at 2-0 have been rocked by a Walsall side who've come out very impressively 2-2 here's Little Now Cook, in towards Taylor, it'll reach more, and Briscoe has restored Burnley's lead. Well, that'll cheer up the Burnley faithful. And there's your proof. The Warsaw have got to get themselves back in the game again, thanks to some lax marking in the area. Alan Moore. And then Lee Briska. Only on as a sub a few moments ago. And he's beaten poor old James Walker. They have 19 minutes to ensure that they're not going to get a stinging full-time team criticism from their manager. Little one-two, which Little tried to work, and Briscoe! Oh, he's loving it now. Criticism won't be too harsh on the manager after all. One two that Little tried to work with Taylor ended up coming to Briscoe. His finish was sound. Taylor and Little, you can see, were trying to combine, but once it reached Briscoe, he got his second of the game. Now, Briscoe, meanwhile, will allow his mind to drift to thoughts of a hat-trick as Cook swings it in towards Taylor. Simpson hooking it away. Garocho can't get there. West with the up and under, Walker with the gather. Here's Heravelto. Losing out to Cook. And he's tried the chip, and he'll score the goal! And that is magnificent! Walker absolutely stranded. The Brazilian head of so we were two up, we were coasting, and then they uh, they got two goals, and then I changed it, and uh, Brizza came on, he made it three two, and then he got another, and we we ran out comfortable winners in the end, but there was a stage in that game where we were a bit uh, a bit iffy, we lost the plot for about 20 minutes, but we got it back again, and we you know we got the three points.
We've had some good matches, really, you know. I mean, those were fantastic goals. Glenn's first, Muro, and uh, the uh, third one that he got uh, in off the post, Glenn, which was a, a, a good goal he called it in. And that was an, another uh, fantastic game. The night match, wasn't it? And uh, we, we won that 3 2 as well, yeah, so we were doing okay.
Yeah, we, we played Norwich and uh, a guy scored a goal from about 25, 28 yards, whacked it in the top corner, which was a fantastic goal. So really we had no complaints about that goal, we couldn't have avoided that. Start of the second half, um, it was a foul on Nico, where uh, Ewan Roberts went to catch the ball, Roberts bundled into him, piled the ball in the net. Bit of a scramble and the ref gave it, which I thought was, was a, a, a real dodgy goal. Lad. So we were two down, Gordon got one back, and then we went at it, but we, we couldn't get a, another goal. So we had to take that one in the chin. And we're going to have to watch this lad. And that's pushed into the penalty area, just rolls outside. It's Robert Holtz, lays it back to Charnock. Charnock with a nice luncheon cross. And a shot and a goal. Comes in from number four. And that's the goal we're talking about, which Burnley fall behind. Kenny Lump scores for the railway men. Sean Smith gives it away, Westy, inside to Paul Weller. Me up more. This is where the dribbling skill comes in. And Kevin Ball! Oh! Just what we'd said a few moments ago. Kevin Ball looking to pick up the pieces on or around the edge of the box. Pulls out the save from uh, Bankley, who uh, couldn't collect, and uh, gives a corner away to the Clarets. And it's going to be uh, Kevin Lund to take it. The scorer of the Cruz goal here. She came in in about 16 minutes for the visitors. It's live commentary from Turf Moor. It's really at the moment. Oh, and a reaction save. And the ball still isn't clear. It's gone in. It's gone in. And I'm afraid Burnley are 2-0 down. I agree with the decision, David, actually. It did cross the line. And uh, I think it might have been our own goal, to be honest. Uh, perhaps Stephen Davis, I'm not too sure. I didn't and John Mullen as well, who's also got a lot of pace. So plenty of options for McLaren's in the second half. And Rodney Jack, who has got the pace, and a great save again from Micopolis. From Burnley, we're nearly three down there. Oh, gets in there. Weller, Moore, can he... Oh, now a shot from Cook. Oh, and a good save from the keeper with his feet. What did Burnley have to do? The goalkeeper saved him unorthodoxly with his feet. That looks certain from Paul Cook, who's ready to come on into the uh, field of play. Chance for ball! Van Corley with his feet once again. Goodness gracious me. That was looked another certain goal for the Clarets. Kevin Ball with his shooting boots on tonight. Struck it really well there. Ball. Lohiri. Davis. Still Davis, wide on the right-hand side, Weller waits for the ball. Weller in possession, takes him on one way. Good play from Weller, a goal! Gareth Taylor, brilliant win play from Paul Weller, and Gareth Taylor pulls one back. Steve Davis joined in the attack, he created right from the back, didn't give it back to the keeper because he had a bad groin across the field, Paul Weller, the crowd was saying, get inside the fullback. It looked like Stevie Davis wanted him to go inside. Mitchell, Mitchell. Moore's come deep, offered himself, gets the ball, chance to run the players. He'll give it short to Paul Weller. Can Paul Weller get round? There's only one man on him this time, David. There's been two out for quite a lot of the second off. Foul down, that's a penalty. That's a penalty. Plays the one-two with Ian Moore, goes for the return. The player steps back, and I'll tell you, Andy Payton will take this absolutely every chance. And as I look round, who do I see with the ball in his hands? Andy Payton. Tell you what, David, this is a pressure kick. Andy steps up, smites it into the corner, and there is the winner. The Paddy and Predator does it one again, and let's rejoice to Tom Hawks. Marvellous, absolutely marvellous. Sodji, perhaps uh, with his back to us, got a touch back to the keeper. Battle well going on here, David. Foul. What's he supposed to do? Free kick, very central, very dangerous, very late in the game. So, the, after the evening ebbs on as we look at our clocks with under a minute of normal time left of this game. We've really done well in the second half of the Clarets, but uh, there's always this chance that the opposition is going to pull another one out. 
going to be Smith, I think, who'll perhaps hit this one with that ever faithful left foot of his. <laughs> Top left, is it? Smith, who just plays it down the line here to Lunt. Lunt crosses in! Oh, no. That's it, curtains. Well, we always said they were a danger, but that's 3-2, and it's good night for points for Burnley tonight. Crew going back to Gresty Road with three in the bag. Kevin Ball. It will fall for Briscoe. It's Briscoe on this left-hand side for Burnley. Puts the ball in, an early one in. Into the, just outside there. Telling her, Peyton! Paddy and Predator, here we go, Tom Hart. What can you say? What can you say? We played the ball, the cross comes in, Taylor knocks it forward, Andy Turton turns away, fires it into the corner. Now, surely that is the end of the scoring tonight. And I think at this stage I would settle for that, David. Corner, Lee Briscoe, it's got to be into that box, we don't have time to play nice. Oh, and a good end of there! And Kevin Ball perhaps uh, gets on the end of it. Ball glances off his forehead there. It would have turned out that Andy Payne gets on the score sheet. Listen to the applause from the Clarets faithful. 2 0 down, seemingly pulled it round. They equalise her. They score rather in the last 30 40 seconds. And then the Paddy and Predator does it again. David, I'm speechless. What do you sum up with? Well, I've uh, lost my voice this evening anyway, but uh, three apiece. It's the first draw the Clarence have had in the league, and it's uh, richly deserved. Could have been a Burnley 4-3 win when we saw the missed penalty from Paul Cook, but full marks to the Clarence, good substitutions in the second half, and Andy Payton, who's struggled to get into this Burnley side, could you believe it, comes up with a brace. Well, crew always seem to uh, play well when they come here with Dario's team, you know, and... He always got a good game of football against them. Anyhow, uh, Pates pulled us out that night. He, he got one right at, the, right at the death. And we managed to get a point in the 3-3 draw. So, again, it was exciting, but it was a match we would have liked to have won. And in the end, we were happy to, uh, to get a point, really. No, in that game, you know, that was like watching paint dry. Both sides were, were, uh, we were poor that day. And uh, anyhow, they got a free kick and uh, went in the box, hit him on the shoulder, bounced across the goal in the far corner. Well, we got what we deserved that day. Although we might have got a point because they didn't deserve to win it either. They were as bad as we were. But that was a, a bit of a setback. Then. <laughs>
Big deflection, last 10 minutes, a corner for us, uh, they broke out on us and uh, finished up with Chris Park Williams. He had a shot and uh, from about outside the box certainly and uh, Nico had it covered and it hit uh, one of our defenders and, and flew across right near the corner. Again we lost 1-0 and we didn't uh, deserve to lose that game either. Space for himself, and it's an own goal. Taylor was descending, but it's put in by the captain, Chris Morgan. He was closest, but not as close as him. The midpoint of the first half, and the skipper has aired. Under pressure, Gareth Taylor was behind him after this teasing ball in by Weller. Trying to put it out of harm's way. Here's Cookler. Weller wants it. Weller gets it. More just by the penalty spot. Aims instead towards the run of Briscoe. And the deflection goes into the roof of the net. Well, Briscoe's claiming it. But uh, it'll be interesting to see whether or not that goal is indeed given to him ultimately. Doesn't matter to the Burnley fans, might matter to him. Well picked out by Weller, sensible ball. Well, I would suspect that's probably an own goal against Parkin. Briscoe certainly will argue with me. There we go. Donovan slipping out to the right hand side. Here's Sant. Oh, now he's given what? Penalty. I wondered if he'd given an indirect free kick for dangerous kicking, but I think he's given the penalty. Paul is the offender. It was foot up and uh, right into the body, firmly into the body. a stiff talking to for ball a bucket Callan picking himself up gingerly given as a foul and a penalty and it will be Lumsden who's taken the free kicks and all the set pieces so far who will score? Kept on by Oster. West keeping him company. Still Oster. Corner. Lumsden <laughs> again orchestrating from the set piece. And it's a good header! Chris Morgan again, this time where he intended it to be in the opponent's net and I said he had an eventful time against Burnley, there's the proof again, astonishing, he never has a dull moment against Burnley, Chris Morgan, just enough power to get past Micopolis and the man who opened the scoring now has the latest goal in the opponent's net now. 2-2. Here's Moore, peering out to the right. It's a good ball into Davis. Oh, he couldn't quite get there. Felt he was impeded, and he was. Penalty. Crooks can't believe it. Barnsley fans are furious. The Burnley fans are gleeful. And Morgan goes away, shaking his head. Well, Davis was certain that he was impeded there. A tug of the shirt by Lee Crooks. And who else? 
Fox, but Andy Payton, given the responsibility of surely sealing the win. Is it to be goal 199 of his career? sub you somehow felt he might and he does and it's a beauty and for the third time they have success again we were two up at half time and then we lost the plot and uh, we were glad to get a point in the end but that was a game we should have won we should have won that game but uh, we went up to scratch in the second half to be fair top earlier on they've come from behind and climbed up the league and now they're on this uh, right hand side the cross comes in and uh, Cox gets uh, his header in the way there a rocket oh it clipped the bar Ran right into trouble here more no foul Grant gets possession for Burnley a lot of holding going on a lot of holding and the referee spots it thankfully I think he spotted the three previous, David, in the same incident. I think there were one or two uh, fouls there, and he added up on the totting up principle there, David. I think we got, uh, I think this is a free kick, isn't it? Uh, he doesn't, he elects not to push it deep into the box after. And he's, uh, the passing's just not as crisp as it normally is, or as accurate, David, because all the big lads have gone up there. Steve Davis is walking back. He was expecting to get uh, a chance to get his head onto one deep into the box, and Arthur foxed everybody by playing it pretty short. Yeah, it's Burnley in possession again in the Palace half. This is uh, Lee Briscoe who hoists it into the box. And Taylor's up there, the shot comes in, a goal! Paul Cook scores for the Clarets. A cracker from the veteran. From an unbelievable angle, David, as well. Uh, the cross had come across, as it were, and he just lobbed it back in. I think that was absolutely intentional. The goalkeeper was nowhere, far post, and the Clarets celebrate to Tom Arts. Paul Cook with that ever faithful left foot in. It's gone out. Here's Grant. Hard, low shot from Tony Grant. Paul Weller. Ooh. As he thought, he's still got position, there's more in left foot, chip. Just on that one, we, uh, I just uh, decided that we would go man for man. And that's what happened. And Cook, he scored a nice goal down this end. And that was, uh, that was it. You know, and we won the game 1-0. And that was a big win for us. You know, that put us back to the clean sheet and uh, three points at home against the side who were the form team at that particular time.
And I didn't change it around. We kept, we more or less kept the same. Apart from the Wolves game where I made a wreck and I played the wrong way. I felt I played the wrong way. But it was with the best intentions I started off with it. But we played with the three and the five and the two and we, we got better. But the lads have been playing particularly well. And all through the season, you know, even up till now, I don't think we've had uh, the breaks. Uh, we could have scored more goals. Um, and I still think that'll happen. Because this season made a conscious effort to uh, change the system and to go for it a bit more because that suits the players better now. And they're a bit longer in the tooth, a bit more experienced, and they're certainly better players now, you know. So I feel like we can, uh, w if we go for it, uh, it suits us better. Now, along the way, you're going to get your setbacks, there's no question, because it's a, a fairly level league, you know, anyone can beat anyone else on a particular given day. There's no runaway leaders. So, um, I didn't really um, say too much to them because I was quite happy with the start that I had. Um, and, you know, the signs were there. But I knew we would always get a setback. But the Wolves one was down to me. I, I, I got that one wrong, really. Well, the circumstances of that game were difficult, which has been well documented with uh, Tim, Sam's uh, youngest son. And uh, the thing that came out of that was the, the, uh, the strength of character of the players. Because, it, you know, we didn't particularly want to play that match. We understood the implications of it if we didn't, so we had to go ahead with it. But the players were still in shock, really, from, from what had happened with uh, Tim losing his life. So. You know, they came back and uh, it was two each. And if, if it had been in a normal circumstance, I think we would have probably beaten them. Well, welcome to Turf Moor, where really for the first time this season it does feel wintry. A strong biting wind and there's been plenty of rain around too. It's a meeting of one of the division's top scoring sides attempting to break down one of the division's most miserly defences. Meanwhile, Cook looking for the run of Moore. Page will guide it back to his keeper. Oh, it's an awful kick, and it's really opened up, and, well, I thought for a second Weller might have had a crack there, but, again, he's preferred little skills. And now West, and Moore's shot blocked before it could do any damage with the first corner of the game. You know, I thought Paul Weller was going to hit it first time. I thought it was there. Didn't Cook score a goal early in the season like that against somebody here? Walsall, yeah. He did. It, it was there, but he laid it off, and I think Simon Tracy would be very relieved. Good overlap in the end by West, that's a difficult one to turn in. Looking short to West, and oh, he mishits it, but it swerved onto the top of the bar. That's not what he intended. You know, I'm not sure it was a miss hit. He didn't look set, admittedly, and he didn't look quite ready for it, but I think he's gone for the little chip instead. We're all expecting him to drive it. I, I think he meant that. I think he's gone for the little dink, and that's so unlucky. Deserve better. Cox, meanwhile, trying to retrieve in front of Sufo. It's well done by Ford, cushioned it to Jaffa. It's Tong losing out. Good tackle from Weller. Now Grant. Little. Opening out to the left hand side. Cook. And Taylor! 
lovely ball and a crisp forehead. Well, I don't know what he'll like more, the cross or the header. The cross is absolutely fantastic. Believe me, as a striker, that's what you want to be trying to get on the end of. I mean, it was beautifully played first time by Paul Cook. He's just come on to it. Left foot between goalkeeper and defence. Page can't get there, and I think Taylor knows. All he's got to do is redirect it because the pace is already on it. Just make sure you steer it inside the post, and he did that expertly. That's a great goal because it was a lovely move. Brilliant. Sometimes you see those come back off the woodwork, hit the keeper, and go back into the net. That's a deflection, and it's gone in. Paul Cook hit the shot, and poor old Doan, well, he could only convert it into his own. said in the past it's a funny old game isn't it I mean you can see Paul Cook was having a smile straight away as soon as the ball landed and he hit it taking a big deflection and Simon Tracy can do nothing about it I thought he was going to hit it first time took the extra touch Don is unlucky you could maybe question Tracy slightly for being a little off his line but I'm maybe been harsh that's just one of those if Tracy's back another smidgen you know he'll deal with that without too much trouble I thought he was going to hit it didn't it's just all about the deflection. Brown coming across to try and halt Little, but Little's too clever a player. Opens it out towards West. Up towards Little! He got there, but couldn't get enough on it. Well, he was the orchestrator throughout. I think it would have been fitting if he could have got a better final touch on it. It's a good ball in by West, who's looked to get forward all day long and supply that kind of thing. He's done well to get up above Murphy, but difficult to get the power in it. I think the defender did too. And once again demonstrating why. And he's gone, no! I thought it was going in, and that was almost exactly what you were describing earlier. I think it did go through the keeper's legs. I don't think Simon Tracy knew what was going to happen. I mean, it could have just clipped maybe the inside of his left leg and crept into the far corner. It's gone right through Tracy's legs. But to be honest, I think before that, it got a little a touch. And Tracy wasn't quite sure where it was going. It got a little touch off the defender. And how didn't it go in? Well, we beat him well. We beat him well that day. I think they had one chance at the end. Sufo, the last minute with a header that went over the top, a half a chance. Well, it was a tough game, but uh, we were better than them. And uh, it was a good win, a good, comfortable 2-0. Uh, good workmanlike so performance that one that day. The ball is in that Portsmouth half once again. Dean West has been a tremendous outlet for Burnley, attacking down the right flank, Glenn Little as well. Here is West. Very mobile fullback. this is Glenn Little. Waterman tries to go with him, Little has won it, and he's kept it in. Tries the pullback, and it's off the upright. Came off Taylor. He must have taken a Portsmouth touch as well, because it's a corner. Everybody back, bar Robert Prozanetsky defending for Portsmouth. Paul Cook asks for somebody to come near him. Glenn Little obliges. And Little can hit them with either foot. It's a left footer. And Kawaguchi just about hung on. Clawed it back into his grasp as nowhere he came in at him. Little didn't need asking twice. He was spinning viciously. It's a decent stop. towards Harper's head who can clear straight back to Paul Cook this time it's Hiley's headed clearance now Tony Grant it sits for the short it took a deflection and it's wide it was Ian Moore I think who tried the back heel as it came off Grant's shot Tony Grant drilled it back into the crowd a clever little back heel from Moore but just the wrong side Zinetsky, lovely little step over the ball. Here's Harper. And towards Prozinetsky once more. All very tight for Lee Mills, but he was just clipped. The challenge of Grant. And a 
free kick for Portsmouth, which is most definitely in Prozanetsky's target range. Would be a brave man to try and take it away from the Croatian. Has scored three goals in Portsmouth's colours so far, two from the penalty spot. Now with his first shooting chance at Turf Moor, which he takes and brings a save from Mikopoulos. Out of danger by Briscoe. Portsmouth's first shot on target. Inevitably from the boot of Robert Prozinetsky. Beat the wall, it was creeping in to run. Does get the ball back from Barrett, but didn't have time to dwell. Ian Moore now. This is Little. Little's cross, which Primus will try and deal with, but Paul Cook's there! And he's not far away with the finish either. Drilled it in left-footed. I think it may just have shaved the post as it whistled wide. Little's cross was always difficult for Primus, who missed his clearance off the post. Paul Cook, a whisker away from his sixth goal of the season. Here's Briscoe. Looking for Taylor. Slips straight back up in the air for Taylor and Zamperini to have another go, and another. And it's Taylor turning and brought down by Zamperini. Well, it was always going to go one way or the other. Zamperini had the height advantage. Taylor maybe just got the better positionally. A modern opportunity for Burnley. Within a minute of the start of the second half, Kawaguchi positions the wall. Lee Mills acting as lead interpreter. It's going to be left for a good effort, which is just over by Cook. Tried to catch Portsmouth on the hop. All eyes were on Paul Weller. Cook just stroked it left-footed. Maybe was a little too casual, ultimately, because he was never dipping. Kawaguchi might be the sort of keeper you could beat at under six foot tall. Briscoe. Little. And there's a battle of the two most skillful on the pitch. Little against Prozinetsky. Now it's Weller. Ian Moore's header. Kawaguchi stretching the save. We've already mentioned he's not the tallest, but he's certainly got a spring in his step. It was a decent attempt by Ian Moore. He had to stretch himself, but that may have been dipping under the bar. Corner lifted in by Little. And it's all the way out, doesn't matter anyway. Pushing and shoving. Weller. Room for Cook to his left. He's heading that way himself. This is Paul Cook. Kawaguchi stays back, and there's the first goal for Burnley. It's Gareth Taylor. to wait until the 69th minute but the goal when it's come has come from a familiar source a Paul Cook cross Kawaguchi hesitated and Gareth Taylor's head puts Burnley in front score with his head against Sheffield United a week ago same again Taylor sixth of the season Burnley 1-0 up here's Ian Moore didn't quite ride the challenge. He was fouled by Barrett. And after Taylor scored against Sheffield United against the Blades last Sunday, it was followed less than three minutes later by Paul Cook getting the second. And it's Burnley very much on the offensive with Ian Moore. Acrobatic but just wide. A little deflection, the cross. Moore with a really good attempt. Crouch. Muscles his way past Noere. Briscoe just got enough of a touch. Falls though for Waterman. This is Crouch onside. Peter Crouch levels for Portsmouth. Burnley caught cold. Portsmouth level within three minutes.
lovely turn. Now trying to find the onside strikers, but Ian Moore isn't one of them. He just strayed too early. This is Barrett attacking Lee Briscoe. Now Harper, chance to cross. He's looking for Peter Crouch. Crouch will win the header. This is Lee Mills! Excellent stop by Mikopoulos. Mills really should have done better. What a chance for Portsmouth to go in front. Inevitably, Crouch won the header. I, again, I felt we'd done enough to win that game. That was a tough match. It took us a long time to break them down. 72 or three minutes. And Gareth got in and scored a, a good header. Um, and then towards the end of the game, somebody had a shot. And it, uh, he miscued it, and it went between Crouch's legs, and he sorted it out and stuck it in. So that was a bit frustrating, because, you know, we kept them at bay for a long time. Nico made one good save in the first half from a Crouch header. But other than that, I felt we deserved to win that game. So uh, the luck didn't go with us that day. Probably because of this hamstring trouble, but no doubt they have uh, with this uh, reoccurring from that, that he's been having. But people say that he didn't have such a good game on Saturday, but with it, by his standards, he's been playing out of his skin this season, hasn't he? Yeah, he certainly has. Portsmouth probably got the uh, weighed him up quite good on the Saturday. It's Paul Weller. Great ball in for Little. Oh, the goal! Glenn Little! Early goal! Great bit of skill from Weller, and Glenn Little finishing off. We're just talking about it. Well, what did I just say? The certainly must have won Glenn up because a wonderful little pop in by Weller there. Wonderful stuff and Glenn Little just knocking inside the post. They're putting it around the goalkeeper. Super goal and a super build up to it as well. It's going to be a cut on that far side then. Weller with it. Hammers it in. Oh, headed over by Gareth Taylor. And I feel that should have gone under the bar. Bisco sticks a leg out, so too does Paul Cook. Oh, a good ball from Grant, but there's Ian Moore now. A chance for him. Oh, and a great save from Chamberlain as well. By word, he's deserved a goal. That's more with an early cross from him. It's a good one too, and Taylor can get there. But the central defender is also there. Cox, who, who is the captain, incidentally, for Watford, formerly of Middlesbrough. And uh, Watford still coming forward here. A good ball, good opportunity ball here. That's for Veranza, and a great save from Nick, and the ball smashed across the face. Oh, well, Watford, yeah. Um, Glenn scored in three minutes or something. 1-0, I mean, when it's 1-0, there's always a, a chance something might give. But the, the player's done particularly well again, and uh, there's another three points on the board.
Well, Coventry we played very well, more like how we were at the start of the season. Played really, really well, and we won the game comfortably. It was a really good, solid performance, and we passed the ball very, very well. Of course, Tony Grant had signed Tony then, and uh, he's into passing the ball, and uh, it rubs off on the other players. They have a lot of players who can handle the ball and pass the ball, and uh, that was a big win for us. But that goes to show, in my view, we went down there about three seasons ago in the cup. We lost three nil, three nil, and uh, they um, were a Premiership side, and we were in uh, uh, second division. So there was a three divisions difference, and then within a short period of time, football-wise, relative short period of time, we were playing them on a level playing field, and we beat them fair and square. So that's again credit to the players. You know, they've come a long way. Paul Cook is the captain tonight for Burnley. He's at the front leading them out. The man who uh, scored or created that wonderful goal against Coventry last week from the indirect free kick inside the penalty area that should never have been. Well, tonight it looks like the safest of home bankers, the league leaders against the team tumbling towards the relegation places. But the 18,000 Burnley fans know that there have been some crazy results this season in this division. Will there be another? He probably feels that anything is, is possible at the moment. Quickly taken by Cook, and there's problems here for Grimsby. Taylor scores. Grimsby went to sleep, and Gareth Taylor scores again. And Burnley have never lost when the former Man City striker scores for them. Great delivery by Cook. He has a superb left foot. The ball the heading, Gareth Taylor just had to put his head on it, the ball was so good, simple, simple goal, what a, what a delivery by Paul Coop. More. Taylor deep towards us, waiting across, going in to attack this cross now, and it is Gareth Taylor! Good attacking play by Dean West on our right hand side. Shown a lot of willing to get to the byline and uh, look to get crosses in. On that occasion, Nielsen putting in a good challenge on Taylor, just uh, allowed a very small size of the goal. Alan Moore, Branch is also there. Fox with the header. And it took a deflection somewhere along the line because it's a corner. Again, good delivery, good job by... Uh, Tony, by it wasn't the most straightforward of second half. You must be quite relieved to have hung on to your lead. Yeah, I mean, Grimsby <laughs> did done well second half. We paid us back a little bit. We, once we get the ball down, we're a decent team, but when we don't, I mean, it's anyone's game. But I think we thoroughly deserved the win, really. As you say, a great performance in the first half, and that goal coming so early really instilled confidence into the side, didn't it? Yeah, we've been uh, working on... Crosses all weekend, but uh, Cookie can throw the cross in. It was a good goal. Just what we needed, really. And you're five points clear at the top. That must feel very nice indeed. Yeah, that's nice. I think the lads will really want to enjoy a little break and then get going to Palace on Saturday. And hopefully we can take something there. Congratulations and uh, a great performance for you. You are the Thank man you. of the match. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. The um, I think that's the first time Lenny's lost here f as as long as I've been here. He come with Luton and win and come with Grimsby and get a draw and all the rest of it. Um, we were top of the league again by now, and uh, it brings its own uh, it, its own pressures. And every side wants to beat you, and they raise their game that little bit more. So, again, it's good for the players to be able to uh, to, tr to try and handle that. It's all part and parcel of your learning, and no matter how experienced you are, or how good you are, that's something else to contend with. And hopefully, as the season goes on, we'll get better at it. But we won the game and uh, that's the bottom line of it all. But again, Grimsby made it difficult. They defended very deep. There wasn't a lot of space in behind them. But we couldn't get the second goal to kill them off. And, and uh, there's a big crowd, 
and they were anxious, a little anxious, you know, when there's only one goal in it. But we won, and uh, there's another three points. The crowds have been really, really good, and the supporters have been really, really good because it isn't cheap. Although that particular game, uh, the chairman and the board decided that uh, they would let everyone on for five, pa uh, five uh, pounds, but I think that that was the third home game on the bounce, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. So over quite a short period of time, so it's very, very expensive, and I thought it was a good idea. And obviously the fans thought it was a good idea because they all came. And also, it was a live uh, televised match as well. So it just goes to show you the, the support that is there. But it isn't cheap, you know. Well, m the most important thing are injuries and suspensions. And the players are good enough. It's whether you have enough of them available at a given time. Well, that's the concern. But that's the same for every team in a division. So that brings its own problems because any player worth his salt wants to be playing in the team. But now, because of the number of games and the regularity of, of them, um, and the way that referees are now, you know, it's becoming almost a non-contact sport. We miss time attack, I'll pull the shirt, a bit of this, a bit of that. You know, there's no way you can go through a 46 match season, league games, uh, plus your cup matches, and not You'd be very fortunate if you didn't get five bookings for each player. So the um, suspension is a big thing. Uh, so we need cover for that. And hopefully when the players do come in and play, they're, they're nice and fit and strong. And if they haven't been playing regularly in the team, then they've been playing in the reserve team. Or I have to arrange closed door matches to try and keep them fit. So you can't be match fit unless you're playing matches. And you can't be first-team match fit, really, unless you're playing first-team matches, as opposed to reserve-team matches. The injury side of it also can be a problem because of the regularity of the matches and because the World Cup uh, is next year. So the season's a lot shorter this time. And uh, those are the two, uh, the two main things that uh, come into uh, my way of thinking, because I think the squad is good enough. But that's not to say that if uh, a couple of players who I have in mind did become available and I could, uh, I could uh, afford to get them, then I would go to the chairman and ask him, and I'm sure if they could, they would back me again, because we need to be constantly strengthening the squad and uh, upping the quality that's coming on the training ground. It comes with age, it comes with experience. It comes with a desire and a will to be first and to do well. And I have that in the club now, on the post to how it used to be three and a half years ago. So everything at the moment's going well. We've played 21 games. We're up the top of the league, or very close to it. We got uh, 40 points from 21 games. If we had the same return from the next uh, 21 games, that would leave four to play. I think we would be in a, a pretty good position because of how tight the league is and what have you. Uh, so that's the object of the exercise. Although we're in front of time at the moment, um, but if opportunity presents itself, then you know we want to try and uh, uh, kick on and, and uh, be up the top of the league. Now I've no doubt we'll have some setbacks along the way, but there's no reason, given an even break on the things I've talked about and a little bit of lady luck, you know, somebody has to be up there, so why not Burnley? That's my view. And the players aren't frightened to be first, which they've proved. So, we crack on. Well, there we are. It's been a, a great season up to now. Let's hope that uh, things carry on and Burnley can stay up at the top of the table and go up into the Premiership as of right. It'll depend upon everybody pulling their weight. And for the forwards, that means people like this fella keeping on scoring the goals. Yeah.